a silhouette vanishing into the fog. That is the last we see of Cheryl Mason in Silent Hill. While we will see pictures of her, recordings of her, hear her voice, never again will we be this close to the protagonist's daughter. And the tragedy of the story, that this is the last time they will ever meet, is only revealed once the game has been finished. Cheryl Mason, regardless of the player's actions, is gone. Silent Hill is the story of loss, of the loss of a child, and Cheryl is the child we are mourning and searching for. She represents innocence, purity, and the pain of loss. Her name embodies this, not only because the name Cheryl is likely a derivative of the French Cherie, meaning beloved, but because she is named for an actress who plays a character with an incredibly similar role. Cheryl Lee is the young woman who played Laura Palmer in Twin Peaks, directed by David Lynch, who is named throughout early interviews and behind-the-scenes information as a major inspiration to the series. Twin Peaks is the story of Laura's mysterious death and the attempts to solve her murder, and the tragedy of her young life being cut short is what gives the story its pathos. Cheryl plays much the same role in Silent Hill. Her clothes are light and innocent, the same color scheme as Alessa's, red, blue, and white, done in paler tones and childish patterns. She's barefoot, creating a further sense of danger and fear as the poor girl wanders the shadows in her stockings. Two cats are on the front of her dress, perhaps a reference to her dual identities as Alessa and Cheryl. Cats in Silent Hill represent innocence. They are tied to children more often than not. Cheryl in the first game, Laura in the second. In the West, cats have a bad reputation as symbols of evil, but in the East, and Japan especially, cats are symbols of luck and fortune. The cat as a symbol of innocence makes sense in this context, which makes what happens to cats in this game take on a far darker connotation. The only living, normal animal Harry meets is a cat in a locker. He sets it free, only to hear a terrible screech when it runs into the hallway. A monster will appear when Harry enters the hall, one that wasn't there before. In the other world, he'll find the locker the cat was in soaked in blood. It's a terrible fate, one that we don't see, but that is heavily implied. Just as Cheryl's fate isn't really seen, but her vanishing tells us all we need to know. Eventually, Harry and the player realize she's never coming back. The cat represents Cheryl, as well as being a reference to the film Alien, in which a similar scene occurs where the team fears a monster is about to attack in the locker room only for a cat to pop out. Other media property tie-ins are connected to Cheryl. The character reel at the end of the game has Cheryl sticking her tongue out, similar to an image from Train Spotting, a dark British comedy about poverty and drug addiction. The character, Diane, is an underage girl who blackmails the lead into a romantic relationship a connection that might tie into the dark original idea the team had for Cheryl and Harry when they were named for the lead characters of Lolita. Another real-world reference is to this image, Christina's world. The painting, and the house it is based on, is the reference used to create the Gillespie house in Silent Hill. Team Silent wanted to create a real-world small American town feeling for the game, and the Olsen House is one of the most famous American homes, made so by Andrew Wythe's painting. He was neighbors with the painting's subject, 
Christina, a young disabled woman who could not walk. The house was her world, in his words, and the painting seems to portray something solemn and severe in the way she's gazing off at the distant home, how lonely and empty it is. And Cheryl takes on the role of Christina in the cover of the Japanese Silent Hill Perfect Guide, which reimagines Christina's world with Cheryl and the Gillespie house. Cheryl and her counterpart Alessa are also stuck in a small world, trapped by their circumstances, the house representing that confinement. Cheryl may have disappeared, but she is still present in a few scenes of the game. It is her directions which send Harry to the school, a note left by her drawing pad which she was using in the car. Once Harry goes to Midwich, he hears his daughter's voice on a phone, asking where he is, but the call is cut short. Her face, appearing to be contorted in agony, appears on the televisions in the Vestal Gigastore, and Sybil claims to have seen the girl, or perhaps Alessa, on Bachman Street. When we consider the two forces at work in Silent Hill, it seems strange to imagine either Alessa or Dahlia are behind these instances of Cheryl's brief reappearance. Alessa is seen at the school, the lighthouse, and the amusement park, where she is placing the seal of Metatron and attempting to stop the god's birth. When she sees Harry, she leaves, and only faces him when he doggedly follows her in the amusement park. She's not interested in him, or in tormenting him with images of his daughter. Dahlia first appears and summons Harry with the church bell, and tells him where to go. Later, she appears on the boat, to once again tell him his next destination. She has to appear physically, and doesn't seem capable of teleporting in the same way Alessa is. In fact, she never seems to use any abilities. Presumably, she doesn't have them. It doesn't seem plausible she could manipulate this nightmare world. But what of Cheryl herself? As part of Alessa, she too may have powers. She was connected to her for years, and could hear her voice calling for help, according to supplemental materials. It seems likely that Harry's journey begins with Cheryl as the guiding force, pointing him towards the school as a place where he'd learn more about the truth of the town and the terrible treatment Alessa faced as well as seeing the girl in the basement. The note and the phone call may both be genuine attempts of Cheryl's to connect with her father. She is reunited and joined with Alessa again at some point in the game, but we don't know exactly when. Still, this doesn't mean she disappeared the moment they were rejoined. In the bad ending of the game, where we see that Alessa is physically in one body, Harry still hears Cheryl's voice saying goodbye. She is still her own person, even united with Alessa, and it seems plausible she was at work in the town. That in fact, the only positive force attempting to help Harry was the very daughter he was trying to save. Thank you for listening to this week's Silent Hill Symbolism. If you like what I do and want to support it, please consider becoming a member through Patreon or the YouTube Membership Program. Or you can buy my books about Silent Hill through my Ko-fi store. Thank you to all the members who support this channel, a number that has recently climbed to 150 people. You are all amazing. And I hope to see you again in Silent Hill.